you guys everything new under the sun. Will a Jackery 1000 power a house? We're going to find out. Now first with the unbox, the, the packaging is very nice, it is very well padded, it comes with a little pouch which includes the power brick, the 8 amp uh, power brick, 170 watt, and a little uh, 12 volt uh, plug-in cigarette lighter charger as well. It comes with some, some basic documentation, the documentation is really straightforward, really simple. I really like the manual, it's not a million pages, it's just a fold out, but it's, uh, it really, uh, really works well. And a warranty card, of course, and the unit. And that's it. Uh, like I say, the packaging is very nice. The unit is very sleek, uh, very uh, practical, uh, very heavy duty, uh, and it weighs a bit too. And you can see some of the specifications on the bottom. You can pause it and read it if you want. Now this unit, when I received it at least, uh, it came with 35% charge. So you do have to charge it up to 100% before you really get going. Of course, you got to peel the plastic off first. Um, that's the only other thing. This is this is otherwise ready to go, but uh, for to ensure the battery is uh, topped up properly, definitely uh, charge up to 100%. Now, when I plugged it in, it uh, was started. It started charging at about 160 watts, but you'll see at the plug, um, it actually shows 170 watts on my blue planet. So you can see a bit 162 watts there. Um, 170 drawn for the wall. The front of the Jackery is where you've got all the plugins, USB ports, and solar inputs. So up here you have your inputs. You have your brick input, uh, 8 amp, 8 millimeter uh, input, and you have your uh, mini Anderson uh, pole input there for solar, and it will charge at about 170 uh, watts. Um, on either. It's a little bit slower on the wall uh, adapter, a little bit faster on the solar. There you go. You've got a display button to light up the display. You've got your percentage, you've got your input watts and your output watts. Very simple. And then you've got your graphical display of the battery. On the bottom you have your 10 amp 12 volt cigarette lighter plug for everything. Um, uh, pumps for uh, air mattresses, uh, all sorts of uh, things you can put in there. Even my uh, Brentsy incubator, which uh, you'll see it, which you see in this video. USB-C ports and uh, USB, regular USB ports and a quick charge, higher amperage port as well. And you've got three uh, residential outlets, 120 volt and a 1000 watt inverter in here. And in this video I go through and I test it on a large number of residential appliances, regular things that you might try and use on it. You've got your little buttons up top here to turn on the outputs for each. And that is it. There's nothing on the rest of it. You've got a, a vent here. Uh, you do have a light here, which is kind of handy in an emergency situation. You never know when you're going to need a light. Some people have uh, poo-pooed that and said uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But honestly, when the power goes out, uh, you'll be glad you have uh, that light on there. And that light would probably last for many days with this. Nothing on the sides or the back. And the bottom simply has some specifications of the unit itself. Overall, very sturdy um, case here. Got a big handle here, uh, good solid plastic here. Um, you could probably drop this, although obviously they don't recommend it, but you could probably drop this a couple of times. Take it to the work site and it's not gonna matter. It's a uh, good hard, you know, good hard plastic that will uh, will take a beating, I will say. And, uh, and so that's good about it. Uh, the inverter is pure sine wave, that's a key thing. So we're gonna look at how many appliances we can run on this in our house and see if you could truly run a house off this. Now the first thing you do when you're testing one of these Jackery units is uh, you want to make a loaf of bread. So that's what we did. I got my Zojirushi bread machine uh, all plugged in, ready to go, and plugged it into the Jackery. And I wanted to see if it would uh, last. And you'll see in a few seconds that uh, indeed it works very well. The pure sine wave is perfect for the motors in these things, ensures that they work properly and efficiently. And you'll also note um, that this, uh, the whole baking process was about 3 hours 40 minutes. And it did all that. And the max uh, wattage ended up being um, between five and 600 watts, 533 as you can see there. We started from a percentage of 99% uh, there. 
So that's just an example of the, the fan noise that comes out of it when the inverter starts up and a lot of power is really being drawn. And here's an image of uh, the percentage after it was done baking that loaf of bread. So it did bake the whole loaf of bread. So you could do about two loaves of bread um, from 100% capacity. Um, you know, that's not a common thing you're going to use it for, uh, but you certainly can do it. Now, here's an interesting one uh, for all those homesteaders, food security guys. If the grid goes down and you have some e eggs incubating, this is a Brincy incubator, 7 egg incubator. And this runs off 12 volts, so it's really handy. So it's got a power brick, and it also has a 12-volt plug that I added to it. And plugged into the Jackery. It works very well. It only takes between 20 and 30 watts. You can see 27 there it was pulling. And here is the test of the 12 volt adapter. So both of them uh, work and run the incubator perfectly. So if the grid were to go down, if you were out of power for uh, you know a, a day or 24 hours, 48 hours, this would certainly run it. And going at about uh, you know 30 watts, I mean it would run for a couple of days straight. And that's even if you're not uh, not charging it up. Um, so that that was pretty uh, pretty impressive. I like that ability, and it just works out of the box. No fiddling, uh, no solar panels and batteries to hook up, and all this extra stuff. Here is uh, some of the items I added while also baking the loaf of bread. First, we plugged in a laptop, so got that plugged in beside it, and then uh, and that that only pulls about 50 watts when it's actually charging. It was kind of full at that point, but then we got an iPad, so we'll plug the iPad into the uh, USB the regular USB and uh, we also got an iPhone so we'll plug the iPhone and you can see them they start charging up immediately and it, it handles it without question you've got to click the DC button obviously um, for the DC output uh, but yeah it's handling it all about 22 watts and that's when the bread maker wasn't was just kind of sitting there idle as it uh, rests and so not a lot of power being uh, drawn in this test but it gives you an indication that you can just plug a ton of stuff into it and uh, no questions asked the jackery will just work Here's a look at a toaster. You can see it pulling down some significant wattage, 645 watts. And this was at, at about the 51% level, and it, it certainly works. So if you're uh, camping for a weekend or something, uh, it would certainly work. This is a, a boot up of uh, an Apple iMac. So uh, this is a 27-inch iMac, large. Um, takes about 100 watts. Uh, you can see it powering up, taking about 78 watts right now. And you could run this guy probably for 10 hours so you could do a work day uh, directly off the jacker if you really wanted to and because you can plug in the power and be using power from it at the same time it really acts like a UPS which is a fascinating uh, <clears throat> work scenario for it so if you're if there's a storm coming through and you got to work you can plug in your phone your internet etc to this and as long as the grid is up it'll keep uh, charging up the jackery and you can use power through it but if the grid goes down then the jackery will just keep chugging along um, no questions asked here's a look at it uh, uh, powering a mini fridge and this would run about 20 hours as you can see there lights on it's cooling down so a mini fridge is uh, no problem for the jackery and it would run that for Probably, you know, a good 48, 36 hours at least anyways. Here's a look at a full-size residential freezer. This guy draws about 100 watts. Now, the duty cycle for these things uh, is not 100%. It's about, you know, 50%. So uh, even though it's typical in 100 watts now, um, and that would be like 10 hours, uh, based on the duty cycle, you're talking 20, uh, 20 hours, 24 hours. So it would probably run that freezer standalone at least for 24 hours. Another household item is a hair blower. Now this one does about 1800 watts and of course with the Jackery only supporting 1000 it was a little too much for it. You can see the output spike up quite a bit. On low, I think it will run it on low uh, without too much issue but certainly high. Um, this is another household item that uh, is not going to work. Uh, another one is a water uh, uh, a kettle and in this case again uh, a little too much for it. It's just a standard kettle. I'm not even sure the wattage on it but it was uh, spiking uh, quite a bit you can see the output there sitting at four watts and it's going to shortly um, spike up and you'll see about 1200 and it goes up to 1300 watts and then it kicks out if you have something lower you know in a thousand watt range no problem if it's a little bit over 1100 1200 the jackery will keep going once you hit that 300 uh, 1300 uh, mark that's when it does uh, uh, cut itself out uh, which is good because it's safe and here's a thousand watt microwave 
and I don't know what the uh, full output of this is, uh, but it certainly draws more than a thousand watts. You can see 1300, and really that's the cutover point. And if it sustains over 1300, that's when this thing shuts down. You can, if you can see it kicked up to 1400 watts there for for a while actually sustained. Uh, it will do a uh, a surge a wattage of about 2000, uh, but any sustained, uh, you know, more than about 1300 is a too much for it. This is a well pump. This was one of the, the big things that I, I wanted to see if I could run if, in terms of trying to run my whole house on it. And unfortunately, this wouldn't run either. Uh, I had it on a watt meter, and it was consuming about 1,000 watts steady once it got going, but it surged up to 16, 1,800 watts, and the jackery was not able to sustain it. You can just see it. It dies right, uh, right there. And you can hear the motor trying, uh, but there you go. Now in terms of uh, charging it, here is a, a quick look at uh, the 12 volt cigarette lighter uh, charge in a car. I apologize because it's uh, bouncy, but you can see there it was charging at around 100 watts, just below 100 watts uh, there, so that's not bad. So overall, what are my uh, pros and cons for this? These are kind of my final thoughts as I wrap this up. I think it's a great form factor overall. It's a nice little uh, package, very neat, very easy, very simple. Will it power your whole house? No. So let's take a look at some pros and cons here. I think, uh, well, the, the price is fairly expensive, but $1,400 Canadian. That being said, um, you can't get another 100 amp hour battery uh, for, uh, you know, any less than that, really, uh, like a Battleborn, for example. So from that point of view, just a battery alone for a de decent battery is pretty expensive. If it was 2,000 watts, it would probably run just about everything in my house, which would be really cool. At 1,000 watts, uh, it's more uh, more for a weekender usage and, uh, you know, temporary lights and, and that sort of thing. Another con is the uh, lithium NMC battery, uh, battery uh, a chemical makeup. And it's not as good as uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. This one will recharge about 500 times, whereas lithium iron phosphate, it's upwards of 2,000 times. So it is lithium. Uh, it is better than AGM, you know, any, any lead-based uh, battery. Um, but it's not the top-of-the-line battery. But again, you get everything else with it. So you can't really fault them. If, you, if it was a, a lithium iron phosphate, then you'd be paying a lot more for it. Uh, there's no easy way to connect it to larger battery banks. Now, the only way I thought of was to use um, the 12 volt adapter, but then you would get max 10 amps flowing through that. So you can hook it in parallel with other 12 volt batteries, but you'd only get about 10 amps out of it in terms of draw, which isn't bad. You know, for camping and that sort of thing, you're not going to be pulling a huge amperage every time, but you certainly can't. Um, you certainly can't expect large amp. Uh, numbers coming out of this if you plugged it in in line with another battery and I wouldn't expect you can't you're not gonna be able to charge it with another uh, AGM or uh, etc either because the voltages are gonna be different um, but just the ability to kind of at least output and pull some of those higher amps um, that would be key for me some of the pros it's a pure sine wave inverter so that's a big deal for any electronics uh, even motors motors will run a lot more efficiently electric motors on pure sine wave a thousand watts is a really good range. Uh, I was thinking, you know, if it was 1200, 1500, it would really be kind of a perfect size. And, but even as a thousand watts, it will it will run something 1100 watts, 1200 watts, seemingly without too much issue for a while. It kind of keeps doing that. So it's a very, very powerful. They've overbolt it, uh, it seems, uh, which is good for people who don't exactly know how to take care of it. So from that point of view, uh, it's good quality. Uh, I would say it's perfect for uh, camping, you know, weekend retreats, uh, three days a week, etc. Um, it would be good if you have a little camper, like a little single axle bowler or, uh, or an Airstream or something, and uh, you don't have huge power needs. You aren't running a furnace uh, or, you know, uh, big microwaves or, or uh, big water pumps and that sort of thing. If you just need it for lights and some grind some coffee in the morning and uh, have a fan going, well, then it's perfect for that. It's a perfect weekender. And it will last as long too. The other nice thing is that it does have the solar uh, connector in the uh, in the Anderson power pole connector, and that's really convenient. Although it does only allow about 170 watts input uh, for charging. So again, uh, it's a nice bump up from the 500 uh, from the Jackery 500. Uh, but it would be nice to be able to you know pump 500 watts into it uh, or 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 more. Uh, so that 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 would be. Uh, good if they, you'd be able to do that but it's a, a nice plus along with the uh, the wall adapter of course uh, 
The other pros, it's uh, simply, you know, it's just simple. It's uh, real easy to use, nice display. Uh, any any kind of any dummy can use this unit, and uh, so if you're just looking for an all-in-one unit, uh, you can't get anything better than a Jackery. Um, nothing more simple, nothing more foolproof than a Jackery, I think, with the offerings that are currently out there. Overall, um, what I wrote was uh, this was a perfect weekender, a small camper power system. If you just want to grind some coffee, like I said, or, or charge some uh, cell phones and cameras uh, when you're at the campground or run a little fan overnight, a little 12-volt fan, then this is really a no-brainer, and it's a very simple uh, power system. You can add a 100-watt or 200-watt panel to it, and you, you have a complete and total power system for, for a small camper or tent camping, etc. And uh, that's that's how I would rate it. Pros and cons. Uh, I think for the price, what you're getting, uh, it's a, it's pretty good value uh, in comparison to um, the individual pieces and parts that you would otherwise have to purchase to get uh, what is uh, built into this unit.